Hello everybody, welcome back to Big Board. Whew, what a day. What a day today. Uh, let's talk about this game where there is Discord. And uh, I, I thought I might try and take a slightly different tack with my thoughts on this game because there were some things that uh, struck me as I was doing the live play. I played a full turn live and I, I made a mistake and I, I missed a, a section of the rules which is relatively easy to do and I posted online about that and asked a question on BGG about the particular circumstances and, and if I remember it I'll come back to it when we have this uh, conversation. So let's have a look, look at the components of the game and I'm going to skip you know, I have this uh, sort of eight or ten point thing I like to go through in terms of theme and immersiveness and historicity and uh, the role you play and all the rest of it. I'm going to skip most of that. Uh, I may use it as a guidepost, but I want to talk about, um, excuse me, the uh, the components first up. <clears throat> so I had someone mention to me on uh, Facebook at one point that, you know, these pieces were ugly and uh you know unattractive and you know too many colors and all the rest of it and i kind of pushed back a little bit on that and said you know i really only see two or three uh base colors here and the rest are all shades with the you know there's got the union jack watermarks in the back and then you've got the unit designation the units uh, emblems <clears throat> on the flags and uh, the flags on the counters and i thought that was all rather pleasing to the eye in fact so I kind of took a little bit of umbrage with that, and they were saying, oh, well, you know, just because the palette has seven million colors doesn't mean you should have to use them all. I didn't really think that that was being done here. But when you set the counters down on the map, you know, they, they pop out nicely over here, and you've got all the Argentine aircraft over there, and then it gets a little muddier, right? You've got uh, blue, shades of blue for the circles, and then you've got the task force, and then you've got the counters in the middle, and... Yeah, you can see them, but they kind of blend in. And when you're looking for a specific unit, a specific ship that uh, you don't recall where you put them. Uh, so here I might want uh, HMS Broadsword. I got to physically stand up and lean over the map to look at them. Which brings me to my first <clears throat> complaint about this game. This game does not need to be this big. It does not need to be this this large, this map. This entire section of the map is not used other than this dinky little, uh, you know, two boxes for event cards, uh, this little track here, and obviously the turn record track, right? Now, I can't physically reach the turn record track, and I am six inches away from the edge of the board. I have long ass arms, I'm 6'1, I can't reach the board. The, the edge of the board. I can't reach that that those two buckets up there. If I want to use these, I have to stretch and reach, and I've got to pick them up to read them to see. They're all the same, I think. Yeah, they're all Canberras. But, um, or Canberras, if you're American, you'd say that. Uh, so we all know that, that we know that they're Canberras there, but I, I can't read them. So the board, I think because they elected to go with this large sized counter they decided to make everything bigger <clears throat> and, and, and clearly everything didn't need to be bigger now these counters are nice you've got the artwork of the jet on them and they all look very pleasant so very nice a lot of information on the counters per se it's more of a token so that you have something to kill uh, and this is a you know to hit or whatever number more we'll talk about those things later on so <clears throat> Everything is, uh, so this game, uh, so physically, all the stuff that's supposed to be happening is really centered around finding the task force, you know, finding this task force, sending out, uh, trying to have the patrol, patrolling ships just below it, find it, and if they don't find it, you go to the next phase, which is bringing in uh, uh, aircraft, <clears throat> and you see how many aircraft you're allowed to activate based on on these cards. They have a number down here somewhere that you can't read because it's blurred. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so this is a, where is it? A yeah, very high AEA, so I think if you get four sorties, right? 
and then uh, you roll some more dice. You roll a bunch of dice, uh, and uh, you get after it and see what ships get sunk, and which Exocet missiles are not, uh, uh, you know, get through. <clears throat> At some point, you then get to. Uh, you can't get there until turn 21. And so once, op, once, op, once, once, once Operation Sutton is activated, you then go through this landing exercise where you try and land these troops from these passenger ships and these assault ships over here. <coughs> Excuse me. And land them on... Uh, I've been sneezing all day today. Uh, thank goodness it's raining, taking some of the whatever's in the air out of it. Uh, you put... Uh, you put forces in here and do land assaults or whatever. So I didn't get to that. I didn't get to that phase because I got, I got, I got, uh, I got that solo game syndrome thing going on where, uh, I felt like I was m mechanistically going through, mechanically going through step after step after step after step, roll a die, roll a die, roll a die. And and, and part of me wouldn't have minded that so much if there weren't three or four or five, I don't know how many different dice there are there. There's a D4, a D6, a D8, a D10, a D12. Uh, you know, looking up which die do I use for what situation. I, I don't know why all of this, we couldn't go rid of all of this. I just had two D10s and done percentile. Because it's a percentage chance, right? I need a one to spot you. It's a twenty-five percent chance on a D four. Oh well, this is a this is a navy group, and you get a D six chance or a D eight chance or whatever it is. So, I found that very frustrating. Um, I whole sections so whole sections of the gameplay uh, don't happen if you don't roll a one. And it's almost like uh, you know, let me just go and roll a one, roll this die. And this die, and one other die, whatever it is, this die. It's going to be a roll that 21 times, and then see how many times I'm going to, I'm going to uh, spot you, and let's work out if there's going to be any combat or not. And then the combat is very simple. It's you know, roll a die and see if you roll a one. Uh, and then uh, when you're trying to get through on these uh, these zones here and scramble and intercept and all that sort of stuff, it's you know it's either roll low or roll high again as well. And uh, and you know you you close in from 30 miles to 20 miles to 10 miles and try and uh, do something. I feel like I'm playing the game for the game. I, I feel exactly the same way when I uh, am playing the Hunters, when I am playing RAF Britain. There are very few solo games that are giving me <clears throat> choices to make about what what I should be doing, could be doing to uh, make a difference in the game. Of the three or four turns I played here, you know, at, at the end of the turn, you're supposed to kind of, I guess, sweep all this off and then rearrange your forces. Well, why, why would I bother? Unless I lose a ship, why would I rearrange my forces or put the units back? Uh, I did learn a lesson in that, you know, I probably don't need to have units up on cap uh, because I can probably scramble most of the time unless there's a scramble modifier going on or some sort of modifier preventing me from doing that but uh, <clears throat> with astute management and I kind of I kind of bumped these when I was moving the camera around but with astute management of these uh, sets of aircraft here I every turn I can get I can make sure I've got guys at the ready so I've got three or four different groups of aircraft I can have a good chance at intercepting most of the Exocet missiles that come at you. Uh, I can try and interdict supply if I want to, but you know, for the mo for the main part, I'm just going to protect my fleet because that has the troops on it, and I need the troops to win. Uh, if the if the Argentine forces get more supply, that's great. I'll, I'll manage that. Um, so it. It I didn't I didn't see areas where I can you know make some choices. Should I put cap up? Well, I don't really need to, so I'm not gonna. So I'll uh, I'll keep them all down here at the ready and uh, use them all to intercept. <clears throat> the land battle is similarly uh, uh, abstracted, and I really I I really want to I really want to like this game. I, I like I like the event cards that that come in. 
But most of them, all they're doing is uh, that you, it's it's something being imposed upon you, and your choice is: do I resolve it now and lose some uh, popular will at home or international support, or do I leave it on the board and resolve it later? And the longer you leave it, the more chance you have that you are going to have a a low uh, uh, willpower or opinion, domestic opinion later on so you may as well eat it and deal with it now and just take your chances because who knows you might actually get a a card in here that's decent for you a very few cards in here that are decent for the uh for the british player uh the uh, the the means of moving the task force is was so abstracted that i actually didn't really understand what was going on so i went back and reread the sections of the rule rules again but these cards are, are what are moving you through the water in essence and uh it, it's it was odd so you you can choose not to do not to move but why would you uh, you need to literally get closer and closer and escalate and make things harder and harder for you so it's a great uh, this uh this gradiated curve that's going to uh is that a word gradiated there's a curve with a gradient on it uh, things get progressively more difficult because you have more uh, more sorties coming at you and you have you know, progressively less ships and then you have the impact of the events occurring. And it, it's great, I guess. It's awesome, <laughs> but but I'm not still not, I'm not making any choices. I, I'm not, uh, you know, am, am I going to choose not to try and intercept the Exocet missile? That would be dumb. So I, I just... I felt like I I didn't have a lot of meaningful choices to make. And that's the key here is meaningful choices. There are certainly little mechanical choices to make. Where where do I put my ships? Do I do I put cap up or don't I put cap up? Do I uh resolve the resolve the event now or resolve it later? Uh either way you're paying. Just a matter of when you want to pay. So coming back to uh the whole spotting thing. So back in eighty two uh, I was told there was no GPS, so we couldn't <clears throat> Uh, not that uh, folks haven't navigated around the world for the last for the 400 years prior to that, but uh, the naval patrol action, if they fail to find the task force, uh, I assumed wrongly that therefore there would be no air action because if these guys couldn't find the task force, and sure as hell, uh, these guys don't know where they are either. And conversely, if they did find the task force, then there would be air assaults going in but apparently you just get the air assaults anyway and these guys magically find that well there are some die rolls but they they have a much higher chance of finding the task force and then executing an attack a standoff attack against that task force uh and we kind of messed that up for one turn i fixed it the next time so that i had a little uh a little brain fart with that because I really was having a hard time. If these guys over here, this these aircraft found the enemy, they can know the general area. They can see where they are relative to how long they've traveled and how fast they traveled and work out roughly where the task force is and then these guys should have an increased chance of finding them and, and conversely if these guys find them then they're going to shadow right they're going to drop a drop one of their subs off to shadow the task force and then they'll pop up and snorkel and send in the message and go here we are boom and then off come in come the aircraft so now historically i don't know what the hell happened i, I have not read a full in-depth Right up on the naval action on this uh, in, on this particular battle, I've mainly read about. Yeah, these are the Falklands Islands over here, by the way. Uh, nothing happens over here at all, ever. Uh, but that said, <laughs> I have read a, a number of books about uh, uh, the yomping that went on over here in uh, in the Falklands. So I don't think this is the game for me to work out what went on there it is a game it's not a simulation i'm not expecting a simulation i bet it plays out probably fairly fairly close to kind of sort of maybe what happened uh maybe it doesn't i will never find out because i won't be finishing this game nor will i be playing it again i don't think now all of that said all that sort of less than positive uh, feedback on uh, on the game 
you might say, well, gee, Kevin, what's the, what's the, what else do you have to say? Well, I have, I do have this to say. I think if you're the type of person that, that likes to jot down, which I started doing, you know, I started writing down all of the, there's one of the dice, uh, all of the, all the different stuff that happened in the, uh, the different, with the different die rolls and it, you, it, it presents a story to you and if you have a nice imagination and you're creative i think you can create a fantastic story as evidenced by the the annual game playing of this in may every year on board game geek where everyone uh, plays it day by day and writes in and uh lets everybody know how they went there is a there are dozens of uh, well, dozens there are lots of narrative opportunities here if you're that guy or girl that would like to uh, create a story out of the die rolls that the game gives you and tells you to do, and uh, and then you uh, you are executing the story for the game, you get to write it down and experience it. And that's about as close as I could come to saying that there's something worth playing here if you want to generate a narrative sort of flow and that's probably the only reason why i might keep it and i might play it again is that maybe in my dotage i will pull this out and go through it turn by turn die roll by die roll i'll put my little wrist guards on to protect my wrists from getting arthritis from doing this the whole time rolling those dice uh, and write a, a a story and maybe that will be a uh a seminal work on the uh, Falklands War that I could sell on Amazon for two pennies. So, this is where there is Discord. And I uh, I found Discord all right, but the Discord was with the game itself and not uh, not in the, the, uh, the title. So, I wanted to share that with you because there's lots of people racing around trying to buy this game because it's, I saw a copy on eBay for three hundred and sixty dollars. I think I I paid well over probably a hundred for this. I forget now. Or maybe, I think maybe I picked it up in the second printing or something like that. I I forget now. But uh, you know I think they average about one hundred and seventy dollars or one hundred and eighty dollars on Board Game Geek. Um, so if you're going to go spend that sort of money, you need to know what you're getting into. I'd be more than happy to chat with people about the game in particular. I'd be happy to share more uh, i've got a rule summary here that can be used and i've got some charts and things and uh you know there's additional material that you could have from me if you want to have a think about the game before you go jumping into it i think this would make a fun computer game i think this would make a fun uh uh you know ipad or or slate based game or something like that where you know you just point and click and hunt and peck and let the system do all the die rolling in the background and you know put a little animation up when one of your ships sinks or something like that maybe that'll be more engaging but this is not mechanic i'm not integ- i'm not i'm not mechanically engaged with the game enough i'm sitting here looking at a, a list of tasks that have to occur and i'm grabbing some dice and i'm rolling some dice and go oh look I roll a one. That's awesome for me. And that's kind of the extent of it. Um, so I, I wish I could have got into it more because I've been thinking that this would be a fabulous game. So I'm open to suggestions on what's next in the Falklands era to be played. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and comments on my thoughts and comments. So take it easy.